Many of the guests that I see here this evening have attended our national conferences and they're being held in October this year, one in London and one in Leeds. And many of you will know that we have tried to build um, each year um, on what went before so that they're not just uh, the happy sheets at the end of a conference, but that they inform part of our work program for the next year and that we build on whatever comes out of a conference. And this year will be the launch of the, uh, the portal for horizon scanning. And the other piece of news which I'm thrilled to share with you is that yesterday the uh, Euro Commission, uh, European Commission agreed in Cyprus with uh, all health ministers present uh, that uh, the UK will lead for all 34 member states for the next three years on horizon scanning and the centre has been chosen to do that work so I'm utterly thrilled. I met yesterday with the Director General of Workforce and Crisis Management from Belgium. There's an interesting title. So uh, I told him group, group 4S might like to meet with him. Uh, um, so, uh, so without further ado, I'm going to press on and do a, a short introduction. Uh, there's a myriad of stuff in your pack, and I'm just going to touch on uh, gently a little bit of where we're going with horizon scanning at the, at the Center for Workforce Intelligence. So the first thing to point out is the kind of big context that everybody in this room is acutely aware of, um, and that's why are we doing this, and what, what common purpose do we have, whichever bit of the system we work in. And I think if it isn't about improving people's lives, then it should be, and I'm, my guess is certainly from the people that I work with and meet regularly, uh, that whenever we're having a dispute about something, if we can connect back to what it is that we're trying to achieve, that usually improves the quality of the debate and uh, makes us a, a little less parochial. And, and I think it's going to get harder. Uh, I think it's, it's going to get much harder. If, if you look at the um, IFS paper and it talks about uh, at, at kind of best 10 years of uh, flat cash in health, and this morning I was presenting to a social care board and that board is facing 28% cuts in their budget, 28% over the next three years, and they don't think it's going to end there. So, and, and people are still trying to talk about improving uh, services and better value for money, even at 28% cuts. Now, when I was a service manager delivering services, I was uh, previously chief psychologist for the city of Southampton, and every year I was asked to do uh, papers on what would happen if there were one, three, and five percent budget cuts. And uh, the way I wrote the papers was always that the end of the world would happen if it was five percent. Uh, three percent would be disastrous, and one, we could probably manage that as an efficiency saving. And I just think about those halcyon days of where that was the kind of landscape we lived in, and now we're asking people uh, where it's already cut right back to be thinking how they're going to do that even more. So it becomes, as that illustration says, about looking at risk, costs and benefits and about having to genuinely think about new ways of working. Not that people haven't had those conversations for years. Everyone in this room has had those conversations about uh, potentially new job descriptions, role extension, substitution, all sorts. Of, they've had those discussions for years. Well, I don't see any other way around it than actually thinking about doing that now. And uh, I think that that's what this slide is summarizing. The, the idea is that the imperative is not being driven anymore through ideology, but through the fact that we do want to improve people's lives. We want to preserve and, if at all possible, improve the quality of service and service delivery, but against a backdrop of uh, massive financial stringency. So what is it that we've been doing on horizon scanning to date is that we've developed a methodology and you have a little card uh, in your pack that summarizes it on uh, one piece of A5 that says what it is that we're trying to achieve. So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. I just want to say that we worked extremely hard to get stakeholder buy-in to the methodology that we formed. So we didn't dream it up in a back office and then tell the world we had a, a, a kind of fairly elaborate stakeholder engagement process to arrive at that methodology. And for horizon scanning, we have a steering group, a reference group, and a methodology group. 
And the steering group is relatively small. The reference group is very large, and, and we've had a, an enormous response. I'm thrilled to tell you that we have no trouble in finding people who want to be involved in it. I mean, we literally have people ringing up to us to get on it, and I, that's not the case on some of the groups that we try to work on. So I know that we've uh, somehow or other caught the moment, and people are genuinely interested in long-term strategic thinking and planning. I've told you about the digest that you've got in, uh, uh, and if you want to go on receiving it, it'll come to your inbox. You can unsubscribe, so if you get to the point where you say, if that CFWI send me one more thing in my inbox, I'm going to scream, just click the unsubscribe button at the bottom. We don't really want to bother you too much, but we hope that the digest and other documents like that are things that you'll actually uh, be pleased to receive. Then, uh, as I say, this exciting piece of work about the uh, uh, European Joint Action, I'll, I'll do one quick slide on that. <coughs> and then the last bit that's on this slide is about strategic alliances uh, that we're forming with groups. Um, nationally, that's in uh, England, in the four countries where we have uh, secured uh, their contentment with our representation of them within the context of workforce planning in Europe through their first minister and so on. So that's, that has been uh, signed off with the Department of Health. So I'm thrilled to say that those um, national and international links are formed. And then we now have memoranda of understanding uh, with many of the major countries in OECD and others uh, who are getting in touch with us. And you can see who that is if you click on the landing page of our website under international and you'll see the flags of people who've now uh, formed a, a, a special relationship with us in uh, committing to doing some collaborative work together. So the countries that are partnering with us uh, to actually, we lead and we do the work and we're responsible for the deliverables, but we are pleased to say that a number of countries, and there they are uh, listed there, and as well as countries, uh, there are organizations. And uh, this is a three-year joint action, and we will shortly put up to the uh, web uh, a brief uh, saying what the deliverables are across the three years. And yesterday's workshop um, with the Belgians who are leading on the project management and program management was to begin to bottom out what the key deliverables <coughs> are and the milestones, and particularly in year one. We're very keen that, uh, that we will take advantage of the international uh, cooperation to be thinking about big issues like mobility, migration, freedom of movement, and how that will impact, and most particularly because we're already witnessing what is happening with that freedom of movement, distorting national workforce plans. And we see that that's likely to become ever more uh, an issue, as, uh, as if particularly if there are major problems continuing with the euro. So just a, a little taster of that, and I'm sure Jim could tell you a lot more about it than me, Jim Buchan, is that uh, uh, we're seeing um, Portuguese and Greek nurses coming to the UK, some of whom had been working for three and six months without pay, and they're desperate for work. So. And you, no one planned that. No one thought about the consequence of that. So any kind of workforce plan uh, that doesn't take into account what could be big changes in the future is not a good workforce plan. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we've built the scenario modeling and the probable futures, and now the models for being able to change the assumptions that we make and then rapidly reprogram it to see the so what, the so what happens if that uh, trend increases. I won't go through these, it's just to signify that we've uh, uh, produced a paper which we're uh, finalizing, which will then go up to the uh, to the website and be disseminated uh, to people that attend here and to members of our horizon scanning reference group, which is about big picture challenges. Now, um, we've, we've settled on big picture challenges as a sort of accessible descriptor for what the cognoscenti of strategic futures call um, <laughs> mega trends and grand challenges. But if you talk to anyone in the street in Houston, they might get the idea of a big picture, but I'm not sure if they would get uh, grand challenges and mega trends. So we're trying to settle on accessible language to, to kind of focus on what it is we're trying to do. 
And we have invited uh, uh, some great speakers to come and talk, and I've, I've seen all their presentations, so I know uh, that our big picture challenges are evidenced and described and discussed in each of their presentations. So, you know, the center has put out and set out its stall about what we think are the kind of principal drivers for our work over the next three years. And, uh, and the, the biggest one of those is uh, long-term conditions, comorbidities, and an aging population, and an aging workforce. And that is at the back of everything that we have to think about, is uh, that in 2030, uh, that 51% of the population, <coughs> i.e. will be normal to be over 65. And something that will happen at that point and there is already the grey pound and the, the consumer influence that retired people have and people over 65 have. But I think that they will also start to exert greater power over uh, political persuasions and policy so that if they're not getting their needs met well, then watch out if you're a person in charge of policy or politics because uh, they will then be in the majority, so they can actually change the shape of an election. So it is likely that things uh, won't just come to a head in terms of demand and need and service provision, but there will also be uh, political shifts um, over the coming years. <laughs>